For me, being a first-generation college student is... Everything's a little bit harder. A great privilege, but also a high responsibility. There's not a lot of room for error. I'm the second person ever for my high school to go to an Ivy League school. My dad works as a taxi driver. It means that I'm still able to do just as well as my peers who have maybe had better resources. Sort of like a blessing and a curse. My experience as a first-generation student. Persevering. Resilience. Difficult. For me personally, making friends at Brown was a little bit difficult just because I had never been surrounded by people who were this rich in my entire life. Because you're sort of wondering, okay, like, what do I have in common with these people? Like, do I sort of truly belong? <laughs> I do feel like first-generation college students do need support that's different from the support that's typically offered for students. There's oftentimes a lot of assumptions about what we know, that we know how to go and talk to professors, that we know how to network, that we know how to use office hours, that our parents know everything that's going on. So much of my life here is like focusing on classes and like these esoteric like authors that you know my family isn't used to talking about. Like power is invested in Marxist critique in the economy. Oftentimes like I'll call home and like the only thing that we have to talk about is like, how's the weather? On the other hand, I think there are times where I feel really proud. Like, I'll call my mom back home and I'll be like, you will not believe, like, this kid, like, doesn't know how to do their own laundry. Like, how do you go so long without knowing how to do your own laundry? And I just feel really proud because I know how to, like, take care of myself, right? And that's something that, like, my family has taught me to do. My first generation college student experience. Rewarding. Crazy. But you need to know what you're doing. In some ways, I'm privileged as a first gen student because I'm white but class privilege is a different issue. I didn't want to paint myself as being different from other students. That's a hard thing to admit. Being first gen and being gay means that I'm coming from a background that a lot of students aren't. I had to get a, a job on campus pretty quickly. The university bought me a suit junior year because I did have to do these interviews and I didn't have access to the money to buy that suit. Literally, whether or not you get the job could depend on, you know, how well your clothes fit you. It's a really hard ordeal, right, to approach that space with confidence and to be able to speak on the same degree that everyone else is speaking. Like, you need to be comfortable with how you look. My experience? Exhausting. Struggle. Work. Insight. Emotional. <laughs> Different. When I compare myself to other students at Brown, sometimes I get angry at them if they complain about being really busy, and I know that everyone's really busy here, I think like, well, they don't, they don't work. <laughs> uh, they're busy like improving their resume, you know. My first job was actually working as a food server in the student dining services. While I was making salads, my dorm mates were in the sciences library, finishing up their prom sets for chemistry. I'm originally from Columbia. Uh, my family moved here when I was six. If I'm like trying to conceal my first gen identity, I don't mention work. I don't mention my family life really. Where are you from? I'm from New Jersey. New Jersey. If they ask me where I'm from, I say New Jersey. You know, because like New Jersey, like like anyone can be from New Jersey. <laughs> we get a lot of students from New York and New Jersey. It seems. Well, sometimes I avoid telling professors about my background because I just don't want to seem like a burden. And I don't want to like them to pity me because like I think I'm really capable. So I often just like act as if I'm just like any other student that goes here. IVG started as a project between friends who wanted to explore what it meant to be first generation college students. It actually is pretty surprising to see how much IVG has grown now to this conference that's spanning all across the Ivy League. Thank you so much welcome to the conference. You can always learn the Renaissance painters, but you can't always learn some of the values that you guys have. The one thing I really hope that people get out of the conference is the feeling that they're not alone because they aren't. I remember the first time I told my mom about a job that I got on campus. I was making around $14, $15 an hour, um, and she was just so shocked that I was already making what she took years to be able to make. For the most part, I am proud that I am first generation student. My grandma, I learned, is literate. So knowing just like how far my family has come from that, 
is very, very humbling. Ever since I was a freshman, like I've been saving up to be able to like afford my mom's plane ticket here. None of my family has ever been able to afford to visit Brown. And so probably the only time that they'll be on this campus is when I graduate. I don't know if everyone like has to think about, you know, their life in college that way. It's a reality that these institutions were created by white people and created for white people at the time. And so white privilege, yes, it does exist. But now when you have a lot of people of color, a lot of first gen folk coming into these schools in large numbers, that privilege is being challenged. What makes me most proud to be a first generation college student definitely has to be the empathy I have, which is one of the big issues in America is that there is an empathy gap. And I think that puts me um, in a unique position to kind of push forth a lot of change that needs to happen.